Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we will continue with the characterization of conjugacy of elements in Sn. So, first we will understand this conjugacy of cycles. So, <coughs> here is the first proportion. So, if we take uh, two cycles, let us call them uh, sigma and tau, two cycles sigma and tau are conjugate in Sn if and only if their length must be same. So, the length of sigma should be same as length of tau. So, recall that length is nothing but uh, the number of indices that appear in the cycle. Okay, If we write for example, sigma equal to a1 etcetera a k. So, this k is actually called length of sigma. Okay, So, here is the proof. So, you take sigma to be a1 etcetera a k. So, this k is the length of sigma. Similarly, take tau to be b1 etcetera b k where uh, k is again the length of tau. So, we already actually uh, looked at. So, let us prove uh, the one way. Okay. So, so let us take tau to have uh, length k dash okay, because we want to prove that uh, length must be same if they are conjugate. So, for the forward direction assume that sigma and tau are conjugate. So, that means there exists some g in S n such that uh, g sigma g inverse is going to be exactly tau. Okay. So, now uh, if you write g as follows g equal to 1 to etcetera n and then g of 1, g of 2 etcetera g of n. So, then let us compute uh, g sigma g inverse using the definition and then see what we get. From that it will become clear that tau must have the same cycle type which is exactly length of tau is k. It is a cycle of length k. So, the claim is okay, if you take this uh, g sigma g inverse. So, this is going to be cycle of the following g of a 1 etcetera g of a k. So, it is cycle of length k and uh, that has to be exactly equal to g of a 1 etcetera g of a k. So, how one can check this? This is just uh, using the definition one can check. So, let us rewrite what is this g sigma g inverse. So, this is going to be 1 to etcetera n g of 1 g of 2 etcetera g of n and then you have this cycle sigma. So, this is going to be just 1 etcetera some a 1 etcetera a 2 etcetera some a k and so on n. So, where a 1 goes to a 2 all other indices are fixed and a 2 goes to a 3 and so on and then a k map to a 1. So, this is your element sigma. So, now here you have the inverse of uh, this g inverse of 1 etcetera g inverse of n. So, now we want to compute what will happen to the product of these elements. Okay. So, now uh, let us look at. So, we want to prove that this is exactly of cycle uh, of length k. Uh, given by this element g of a is a 1 etcetera g of a k. So, it cyclically permutes this g of a 1 etcetera g of a k. So, in particularly if you compute uh, what happens on g of a 1. So, you take g sigma g inverse and then compute it on g of a 1. Then let us see what it gives. It is uh, going to give us g sigma g inverse of g of a 1 will be a 1. So, then this is going to be g of sigma of a 1 and then apply it like you apply g on that sigma of a 1. So, what is this? This is exactly equal to g of sigma of a 1 is a 2. So, g sigma g inverse of g of a 1 is exactly equal to g of a 2 that is what it says. Similarly, if you compute g sigma g inverse g of a 2, then you can see that this is going to be exactly g of a 3 and so on. So, now at the end if you do this computation g sigma g inverse on g of a k. So, then you can see that this is going to be exactly g sigma of a k 
and sigma of a k is a 1. So, this is going to be g of a 1 ok. That means, g sigma g inverse cyclically permutes this g of a 1 to g of a 2 to etcetera to g of a k and then this g of a k is mapped to g of a 1. So, this is what g sigma g inverse does on this g of a 1 etcetera g of a k. So, what is about outside? So, if you take some a which is not in this g of a 1 etcetera g of a k. So, then we want to see what happens to that a. So, then let us compute this g a g inverse of a then see what happens. So, note that if a is not in g of a 1 etcetera g of a k then it is immediate that g inverse of a this cannot be inside a 1 etcetera a k. So, that means this g inverse of a it is not element of a 1 etcetera a k. So, that means the sigma must fix that. So, that means this is going to be equal to g of sigma g inverse of a but this sigma fixes g inverse of a. So, you get g of g inverse of a, but what it is it is going to be exactly a. So, g sigma g inverse of a is exactly a for all a which is not in g of a 1 etcetera g of a k. So, that means, so we just observe g a g inverse is nothing but the cycle g of a 1 etcetera g of a k. So, now if g a sorry g sigma g inverse. So, g sigma g inverse if it is equal to tau then it clearly says tau is also a cycle of length k. So, the length of tau is same as length of sigma ok. So, if and only if we want to say length of sigma is same as length of tau ok sigma and tau are both cycles ok. So, that is already given. So, that is ok. So, two cycles sigma and tau are conjugate if and only if length of sigma is equal to length of tau. So, there is no ambiguity in the statement. So, now we proved one way. So, if sigma tau are conjugate then we proved that length of sigma must be equal to length of tau. So, now what is about the other way? The other way is also obvious. Suppose if you take tau which is of the form b 1 etcetera b k. So, then what you can do you can define this sigma from i n to i n as follows. You just simply take uh, this, uh, this g maps this a i to b i for each i from 1 to k and then all rest of elements g of a to a for all a which is not in a 1 etcetera a k. So, you divide i n into two sets which is first a 1 etcetera a k union the complement. So, whenever uh, you take a you map a to b i using g and whenever a is coming from the complement you map it itself. So, that is your g. So, obviously, this is a permutation ok because the number of b i's are also k. So, now g is inside your s n and it is clear that g sigma g inverse is going to be tau using the earlier calculation because g sigma g inverse is going to be g of a 1 etcetera g of a k the cycle. So, that is exactly the tau which is b 1 etcetera b k. So, this proves that if you take conjugate of uh, a cycle that is again a cycle of same length and if you start with two cycle of having same length they must be conjugate. So, now using this proportion we can prove our main characterization of uh, conjugacy of elements of S n. So, that is the theorem. So, what it says? So, you start with two elements sigma and tau ok. So, two elements sigma and tau are conjugate in S n if and only if the cycle type of sigma must be same as the cycle type of tau ok. 
So one way is obvious. Okay, let's prove one way. So if you assume that they are conjugate, then what happens? You write sigma as some uh, okay. Let us say sigma one, etc., sigma r. So this is the cyclic decomposition of sigma. So then what happens if you conjugate the sigma by g? So let's say there exists g in S n such that uh, g sigma g inverse is equal to tau because we assume that sigma and tau are conjugate. So it is conjugate under this g which comes from S n. So then it is clear that tau is going to be exactly equal to g sigma g inverse which is exactly equal to g sigma 1 g inverse times g sigma 2 g inverse and so on g sigma r g inverse. Okay. Now we already know that know that so these uh, g sigma 1 g inverse so that is going to have same cycle type as sigma 1. So if sigma 1 has uh, length k1 then g sigma 1 g inverse also will have length k1. Okay. So now we claim that this is indeed cyclic decomposition of uh, tau, okay. this star. So we claim that this star is the cyclic decomposition of tau. So why that is true? First of all note that each element in this uh, decomposition they are all cycle. Okay. Sigma uh, g sigma i g inverse is a cycle of length length of sigma i. Okay. So that is very much clear. Now since sigma i and sigma j they mutually commute. So if you look at uh, sigma i sigma j they commute. So that is if and only if they are disjoint. Okay. So if you take uh, uh, two cycles, if they are disjoint, we have seen that uh, they commute. Okay. In in case uh, if they commute, they must be disjoint. So that you can take it as exercise. So because they actually uh, commute, so that forces that uh, this g sigma i g inverse. So that also commute. So if you calculate this g sigma i g inverse g sigma j g inverse. So you can see that this is going to be exactly equal to g sigma i sigma j g inverse. So now sigma i is equal to sigma j that forces that this is g sigma j sigma i g inverse. So which is going to be exactly equal to g sigma j g inverse times g sigma i g inverse. So using this commutation okay, sigma i and sigma j they are all they are disjoint cycles will imply sigma i sigma j they commute and that would force that this uh, conjugate conjugate of the sigma i sigma j by g though those elements also will commute okay. and that will force that modulo our exercise. So this g sigma i g inverse g sigma j g inverse they must be disjoint. Okay. So that proves that the decomposition that we have here so that must be actually cyclic decomposition of tau. So that means the cycle type of tau must be same as the cycle type of sigma because the length of these elements again matches with the length of sigma i's in the original decomposition of sigma. So this is uh, actually uh, the forward direction. So what is about the uh, converse? So suppose if you assume the cycle type of sigma and cycle type of tau they are actually uh, same. So then what happens? So you can write uh, sigma as some product sigma 1 etc sigma of r and then tau as some tau 1 etc tau r. So now note that so this sigma i's they are all disjoint cycles. Okay. So basically you are partitioning 1 to n as uh, uh, some a1 disjoint union etc 
disjoint union sum AR. Similarly, uh, you are partitioning this tau with respect to tau uh, partitioning this 1 to n as B1 disjoint union etc. disjoint union BR. Okay. So, now the length of this A1 is same as length of B1 and so on. Okay. So, so what we can do? So, because this is going to be a partition of I n into two different ways, but more with the condition that the, the size of A i is same as size of B i. So, now what we can do? We can produce this G. So, which is a permutation of 1 to n such that. So, this basically uh, G maps. Okay. So, a i to b i. So, how it just maps? It just takes you list a i as a 1 etcetera let us say a k i. So, then b i as b 1 etcetera b k i. So, then you just define g of this a 1 is equal to b 1 and so on and then g of a k i equal to b k i. So, you define g that maps a i to b i. So, since g defines a bijective map from a i to b i, now patching this uh, g together on i n, you can get a bijective map from i n to i n. So, now you have a permutation g inside s n such that now if you take the conjugate g sigma g inverse you can see that this is going to be exactly equal to g sigma 1 g inverse and so on g sigma r g inverse. Okay. So, because uh, the sigma has this cyclic decomposition sigma 1 etcetera sigma r. So, now it is not hard to see if you take g sigma 1 g inverse it is going to be exactly tau 1 because the tau 1 is, is nothing but given by that uh, corresponding elements of A 1. Okay. So, maybe I should use uh, this i on the top so that it becomes clear. It is related to the ith set A i. So, in particularly tau 1 will be A 1 1 etcetera. So, it is a cycle no comma A 1 1 etcetera A k 1 1. So, that is going to be your tau 1. So, note that your tau i is going to be a 1 i etcetera a k i i. Oh, sorry, the image of that. So, that is going to be g of this. So, which is nothing but b 1 1 etcetera b k 1 1. Similarly, b 1 i etcetera b k i i. So, in particularly this g if you take uh, defined as follows okay, using this conditions. So, then this g when you conjugate uh, sigma by this g then you get obviously the product of tau i so which is going to be tau. Okay. So, then this proves that if you take sigma and tau which are elements of S n if they are conjugate then the cycle type of sigma must be same as the cycle type of tau. Okay. So, that gives actually characterization of uh, the conjugacy of the elements of this S n. So, this is somewhat very important uh, result from this you can actually conclude uh, many interesting uh, uh, facts about uh, the conjugacy classes of S n. For example, the number of conjugacy classes of S n must be the number of partition of n. Because if you take uh, some sigma and then you write it uh, in terms of uh, product of disjoint cycles, if you take sigma and then write it product of disjoint cycles, we have seen that this product of disjoint cycles uh, corresponds to the distinct orbits of this 1 to 1 uh, where, uh, where the orbits are defined using that uh, tilde sigma equivalence relation. Okay. So, that means you are partitioning uh, this 1 to 1 as uh, some smaller smaller disjoint sets. Okay. So, in particularly if you look at uh, 
the length of that set which is 1 to n the number of elements of that set so that is going to be exactly equal to sum of all this length of the sigma i's okay so that means so once you write it write it in weekly increasing or decreasing order so it is a convention that your partition is always weekly uh, decreasing uh, decreasing thing so in particularly i can take this l of sigma r and so on etc length of uh, sigma of 1 okay this is going to be a partition of n because our from this uh, construction we always assume that the length is all increasing along this order sigma 1 etc sigma r so in particularly length of sigma of r is going to be the largest and sig length of sigma of 1 is going to be the smallest and uh, so partition is nothing but a tuple of non negative integers okay such that so actually one can assume they are all positive integers such that the sum of the length okay should be exactly in and it is uh, weakly decreasing tuple so the summation length of sigma i i ranging from 1 to r should be exactly n and it should be weakly decreasing if they satisfy these two properties then we call it uh, it is a partition of n so now given sigma the cycle type indeed determines a partition of n and once you fix the partition of n which is this tuple which is the cycle type so that actually determines the conjugacy class so in particularly the number of conjugacy classes is equal to the number of cycle types and which is equal to number of partition of n okay so for example if we take s4 so then the number of conjugacy classes in s4 is going to be the number of partitions of 4 so you can see that 4 can be partitioned as follows so 4 is one partition 3 plus 1 is another partition and 2 plus 1 plus 1 is another partition and 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 that is again another partition okay again there is one more partition which is uh, 2 plus 2 okay so if you take uh, partition of 4 then you get exactly 5 5 dumb well, 5 way of partitioning 4 okay so as i said before it exponentially grows with respect to n so this um, uh, so and it is easy to actually determine like uh, the representatives of for each uh, conjugacy classes once you know the cycle type okay so uh, so now like uh, so one needs to understand actually like uh, what happens uh, if you take this conjugacy classes inside a n okay so let me make one remark and then uh, and then we'll proceed okay so we need to understand uh, sometimes uh, how to work with alternating group as well so uh, so if you take for example like uh, uh, some element okay let's say sigma and tau which is in an okay so because sigma and tau are in an so sigma and tau can be written as product of uh, even number of transpositions okay so this sigma of tau if they have same cycle type okay then they must be conjugate in sn but that would not immediately imply they they are conjugate in uh, an but one can actually determine uh, when they will be conjugate in an okay so i will do uh, one special case okay so that is very important uh, uh, for us to prove that uh, to study the simplicity simplicity of an okay so other things maybe i will write it in the assignment sheet and then you can try to check but anyway that's uh, like if you are interested in the alternating group then you need to explore that further so so let us see like uh, so 
So, it is clear that if you take any uh, 3 cycle that must be element of A m okay, because the 3 cycle is actually uh, product of uh, okay, 2 transpositions. So, if you take uh, for example, A B C, so this is a 3 cycle then you can write it as A B times B C. Okay. So, this 3 cycle, uh, so it is a even permutation. So, this can be easily checked for example, you read it from the right side what happens. So, if you take for example, A. So, A, A is fixed here. So, A, A goes to A here. Okay. Then if you come, come to this A goes to B, then you can see that A goes to B. So, that means if you take A, B, C. So, all rest of the elements do not matter. You can see that A goes to A, A goes to B. So, A goes to B. So, now B goes to C here and then C goes to C. So, B goes to C. So, C must go to A, there is no other option because C goes to B and then B goes to A in this. So, now you can see that this uh, product of these two transposition is exactly equal to this A B C. So, if you take uh, uh, this uh, 3 cycle okay, which is a product, product of 2 transpositions, so in particularly it is there in A n okay. and if you take another 3 cycle because they have same cycle type they must be conjugate. Okay. But now one can ask the question, so they, they are conjugate in S n, okay. but whether they are conjugate in A n. So, that indeed true only for these 3 cycles and under the assumption that if n is greater than or equal to 5. So, here is the lemma, so which will be used uh, later. If n greater than or equal to 5 and sigma, sigma dash or 3 cycles okay, in Sn. So, then we know that they are conjugate in Sn from our previous result. But what one can prove? One can prove that this sigma dash is indeed conjugate to sigma under some element of A. So, there exists tau such that sigma dash is equal to tau sigma tau inverse for some tau in A n. Okay. So, this is uh, indeed uh, very important result which is used in order to understand the simplicity of A. Okay, how one can prove this? So, we already know that sigma sigma dash they are conjugate in S n. So, pick a omega in S n such that omega sigma omega inverse equal to sigma dash. So, if omega is in A n, so then we are done. So, then there is nothing to verify. Suppose assume that omega is not in A n. Okay. So, now if omega is not in A n, so then what will happen since you have this n greater than or equal to 5. Okay. So, what we can do? So, so n is greater than or equal to 5. You write uh, this sigma dash as some i 1, i 2 and i 3. Okay. So, now n is greater than or equal to 5, you can choose R s in I n such that this R s is different from I 1, I 2, I 3. So, this R s is disjoint from I 1, I 2, I 3. Okay. So, once you have chosen something like that, now what you can do? You can simply take uh, this tau which is omega times this R s, this cycle. Okay. So, now note that omega is 
not in air. So, that means it is odd permutation. So, omega is odd permutation. So, that tells us that this tau is indeed even permutation. So, the, this is inside A. So, now compute tau sigma tau inverse. So, this is going to be exactly omega R s times sigma R s inverse omega inverse. Now, note that R s inverse is R s. So, this is going to be omega R s sigma R s omega inverse. So, now you can just do the calculation and then see. So, this R s and this I 1, I 2, I 3 they are disjoint okay? because that is how we have chosen this R s and I 1, I 2, I 3 they are disjoint. That means they must commute. So, I 1, I 2, I 3 and R s that must to commute, but sigma is I 1, I 2, I 3. Oh, sorry, I have chosen sigma dash. So, this is the sigma. Sigma is your I 1, I 2, I 3. So, that means they commute, that, that means this element is actually become sigma. This is omega sigma omega inverse because R s, R s inverse they get cancelled and you get this. So, this is going to be your sigma dash. So, tau sigma tau inverse is going to be again sigma dash. So, we use the same omega that uh, guaranteed from the earlier result and then using that and just uh, normalizing or modifying it we get some element of a n such that the sigma and sigma dash they become conjugate under that element of a n. So, this just proves that any two three cycles they are conjugate a, even in a n okay, when n is greater than or equal to 5. Okay, I will stop here. So, we will use uh, these results that we have developed uh, to prove uh, simplicity of a n for n greater than or equal to 5 in the next class. I will stop here. Thanks.